So good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to Mildon Hall and Districts. We're going to call it Districts now, so it's Mildon Hall and Districts now. Because we've now moved further forward and in this video you will have part 3, 4, 5 and 6, I should say, all in one video. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slap it all together into this one video and then I will block it out as we get into separate parts and then if you decide that you can't handle it all in one go and you want to split it up then you can just literally just watch a segment at a time and that's probably a bit easier because I've got so much to tell you and it's just getting crazy because it's getting carried away now with what's been going on. Um, there's so much to talk to you about and I still haven't finished. And that's the thing, I haven't quite finished. So um, I'm gonna hand over back to myself and um, I will talk you through part three. So let's go over to myself. Good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to Mildon Hall and Volmer and the Extension Construction Project Part 3. And in this part we should be able to look at finishing the whole thing. And um, I'd like to sort of start by thanking all of you who've commented because I had some really positive comments um, and some really lovely commenting on my woodwork skills. Um, I'm no carpenter or joiner by trade. Um, this is something I've always had an interest in, an interest in um, all the time that I was growing up and I never really made it into the industry so I ended up doing bush driving. And, but I do enjoy doing carpentry and using my mind to make things. Um, and so in part three, today's part, we'll be looking at um, just finishing off the whole project and um, I have actually sort of, since the last video, done a few extra bits. So I'll show you those before we move on to the next bit. So the first thing to show you is that I am sitting on my little Ottoman stool. Um, I've got this up of eBay on the cheap. And I've got my district line cushion that I'm also sitting on. So that kind of raises me up. And it also takes me to a lovely height for the layout that I can, so as I mentioned previously on my last video, um, I bought this. So if for whatever reason, I just fancied using this, um, just sitting here to do some bits and pieces on him and just watching the trains go by from this angle as opposed to from either that side or this side, then this is a nice little um, spot just to sort of just watch the trains go by and I'm going to turn it into a nice scenic section. So I'll talk you through that shortly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spin you around. So this is what we have currently. Um, and if I just pull that a little bit, you can sort of see that I've actually made a start on it. Um, I've now painted the, um, the top board in this kind of brown, which I had. Um, it's no specific colour brown, this is just some brown paint that I had lying around that I wanted to get rid of. And so it just saves me some money instead of buying specific brown paint, because it doesn't really matter, because the track's going to go on top of that. So this is just sort of like a base colour, um, just to sort of um, cover any missing ballast that might turn up when I come to do the ballasting. So if anything goes missing, then at least you're not looking at the bare baseboard underneath, there is some colour underneath. But that shouldn't really be an issue in any case. Um, the other thing I've been doing, so if I move you forward a bit, hopefully you'll be able to see that um, I've been also doing some filling. So I've just been filling here and doing all the, all the filling that I needed to do, filling all the holes and all the joints all the way through this unit so it's ready for painting. Um, all the way along there, all the gaps have been sort of filled in all the way along. Um, even now at the bottom skirting, um, I've also filled in all the holes. 
And then when you look at this part, I've also just been filling in the holes along the top fascia. Um, on the joins, I've just topped that up. That needs a bit more tidying up. That's got a little bit more on. And that bit there, just to make the joins a little bit smoother. And also, as you can see, there's evidence of filling just on the edges and the holes all the way along here. So all of this down bottom part is now ready for, for sanding. Um, sorry, for painting. Whereas this bit here, I'm just going to wait for that to go off, give it a quick sand, and then I can then blast it with the um, with a paintbrush with the usual colour blue that I have done on the layer. That's only that's just me moving the autumn. So this is the unit in its entirety. And I actually like the brown that I used. It was just literally some off-cut, off-cut, but spare brown paint that I had knocking about. And it almost looks like a varnish, but it isn't. It's actually a paint that's painted done very thinly, so the grain is still showing through. But like I said, the track work will go on top of it. So as far as the track work's gonna be concerned and the, the track plan, the track plans evolved quite quickly on this actually. Um, because I had a brainwave as to what I wanted to do. And the plan is to have two main lines that just literally going to run all the way along, round to the very end. Um, but I'm also going to have it as a bit of a shunting layout. So, uh, so it's almost like a separate little shunting little area. So what I'm going to do is go have a third line that runs around the outside and that will fan out into some sidings and it will then come back onto the main line at the other end. So it's almost a bit like a sort of passing loop. And literally that's all it is. It's just literally going to be some sidings to store some stuff. Um, it's already been named. Um, I've already got a track plan for it. Um, so it pretty much works. And I've got an idea how I'm going to do the scenery. So this top bit should evolve fairly, fairly rapidly. Um, because I know exactly what I'm going to be doing with it. And it shouldn't take too long. Um, the main bit now which is the next bit I'm going to be doing on this video is to literally just give this whole paint bit, this whole bottom section a paint job. So the first paint job is going to be on the end, on the top fascia because the top fascia is going to be in the dark blue. And so basically I need to cover the bottom bit. So if there's any kind of splatter or anything coming from the bottom, it's not going to go onto any white paint that I've just done underneath. That's why I wanted to do the top fascia first. So that'll be the top fascia will be what I'll be doing first. And then I'll be painting the rest of it in white to blend it in with what's going on with this bookcase here. So hopefully it should marry it all up and it should look really, really nice. Now, I think Mike and Sue had mentioned to me, over, I think it's Pubman Junction, um, about creating more of a space for the radiator. Um, but this is kind of the arrangement that I've actually got going on in the living area and it works perfectly fine. The actual unit isn't right up against the wall so he can sort of escape through the back and up and also it isn't really right up against the top ledge or edge of the radiator either. There is space underneath um, and I think there was also some suggestion about moving this further this way because so it can create more of a space. But I can't do that because the front door opens this way. And so this is as far as it's going to go because I've already tested it. So this is as far as the unit can go. Um, otherwise, the door won't open correctly and fully. So that's just how it is. But like I said, it's too late now in any case. But this is how it is. And it's all thought out. So it all works perfectly fine. And I'm perfectly happy with it. So like I said, my next job now, that's all been filled in just needs painting and then that's pretty much it once the, once it's painted up then I can get the doors on and um, and then that like I said that'll be that'll finish off the whole unit um, so I've got plenty of work still to do I've got an idea with the back scene as well what I'm going to do with that so I really really know what's going on with here now so hopefully it's just a matter of just cracking on and like I said it shouldn't take too long to get this top bit done and I'm looking forward to this because it's really evolved quite r rapidly, the track plan, and um, I really like the idea of it. And it's also a bit of an inspiration from the American side of my layouts that I've been watching on YouTube. I've been watching loads of American stuff. And 
it's not that I particularly enjoy American stuff. Well, I understand it. It's I love the way that they integrate with operating sessions. I love the way that it's that, so they work with other people um, to, to have an operating session. I love the way that they separate the layout with different areas and different districts. Um, I love the way that they've got it all kind of. It seems so professional as well. And the way they they take it really serious in that. I mean, many do here, but. I just like the idea of having a, a sort of in-between state. I don't want to be overly serious with like literally loads of clipboards and, and paperwork and, it, you know, it has to be all done. But I like the idea of operating it with another person, having fun with my friends on my layout and having these various areas named. So when I talk to my friends and I can say, well, look, there's a train here at this point they know exactly where this point is so the other thing i'd like to do is get these fascia boards done and many many americans do it and it looks so much more professional it makes the layout look so much more finished when you have these fascia boards um you just have to look at the american stuff what they're doing it just looks absolutely amazing a lot of it and i also like to have some plaques put in which is something else that i've looked into so um and then again that will make it really really professional and make it look really really nice and it's just going to make it look really, really nice. I, I just think I can't wait to get this all done. Um, so I'm going to go all out. And like I said, I've done really well so far. I'm really pleased with the progress so far. So there's plenty more for this to evolve. So what you're looking at is basically Goswell. This is going to be Goswell sidings over here. And um, so that's the plan. So Goswell sidings is going to be over here. This is the Goswell district. Um, and then you've got Milton Hall and Volmer over in the main layout. And then as we go into the bedroom, then that will be another area. But this side has already been named as Goswell sidings. And you'll see the track plan evolve as, you go, as, as, as this video evolves. So here in this view, you can now see that the um, L shape has evolved a little bit more. Um, like I said, you can see that I've painted the top piece. You can now see that the fascia board has also been painted. It's been given its two coats of customary blue paint. So it's now lovely and brilliant and shining. Um, I've still got the rest to do, as you can see. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that today because today's Friday. And the significance of that is just that because it's a week, we come up to the weekend now, um, the painting can be a weekend job, which doesn't actually make much in the way of noise. What I really want to concentrate on today is getting the link made between this L piece and the main layout. And as you can see, I've already made a strip, uh, a start by putting the strip wood across here, um, this batten here. There's also another one that I've done on the other end. So when that's ready to be extended further on, um, that's ready. So, um, so this baton is ready in. I've then got this scrap piece of wood that's in my hand as an offcut. And basically I've just sort of lined it up and offering it up to make sure that the height is actually identical. So there isn't any discrepancies between one board and the next board. So now it's about tying it up now and creating the link between this part of the layout, the new bit, and connected it to the rest of it. So that's going to be my next job and I'll be doing that today because today's Friday so I'm hoping people are still working and then Saturday I can do I'll get on and do the painting. So here what you're looking for or what you're looking at is basically the beginnings of the link between the main board and the L shape. As you can see there's a lot of wood there and it's actually in two pieces because I didn't actually have um, a two foot piece board. Um, to hand, but I did have these off cuts which I had which I'm going to join together Which actually works out a little bit easier because it's easier to manhandle whilst it's like this and As you can see it's only held in by four screws at the moment And I've just cut a rough outline of the shape to fit the size at its maximum point And then what I'm going to be doing there's the entrance point from the tunnel and then Obviously, if you follow the, the trap plan, it sort of comes out there and it'll come out towards, sorry, towards down this bottom edge here. So I'm going to trim all of that. All of this section is all going to be trimmed off. But I needed to get a rough outline of the trap plan so I knew how much to trim off. 
so that will save a lot of weight at the moment all i'm doing is just initially mapping out the trap the trap plan i'd already sort of mapped out a few days ago with the points that i had to see if it would work so now i know i'm just relay i took a photograph of what i did and then i've basically relayed a little bit of it on here just to give me an outline of the bottom edge and the top edge so i can then cut off all the excess wood that i don't need to save weight so i've now removed the track and i don't know if you can see but there's uh, sorry about the shadows um you can see that there's sort of a rough outline of the pencil lines that i'm going to be cutting out so all this excess wood can be removed so therefore all the excess weight can be removed and what I've also done is along the new piece that we're keeping, I've drawn lines right across both the boards so I can line up those lines to make sure that they are accurately positioned when I batten the two boards together. So as you can now see, um, I've managed to create the link and here it is. And that's based on the track plan that I previously um, did on the floor and sort of looked at the geometry and see that it would fit. So that's now on. Um, all I've done here is I'm gonna just drop you down, spare with me a minute so I can explain it to you what else I've done. So in this closer view, you can see what I've been doing. Um, it's two pieces of board and it was kind of easier to manage that way, to be honest, than having one big piece. I think it would have been a lot easier. It's a lot easier doing it this way. I've battened it across, so it's not um, gonna flex at all. And I've also married up the lines which I'd previously drawn to make sure that they all fitted securely. So the battens will all be hidden, so you won't see any of these battens at all, because there'll be another fascia piece that will wrap around that. Um, for now, all I've done is I've screwed into these two holes to join it onto the batten that I put in earlier. That's only just as a guide, it's just to hold the board in whilst I mark the rest of the pilot holes for where I'm going to put the dowels in. So that way I know that it's not going to move anywhere. And then when I take these out, I know that the holes that are on the bottom are exactly aligned to the ones that are on the top. And I've done the same on the other side. So as you can see on this side, in this view, you can see that I've screwed one in the middle there. And then after I've drilled the two holes either side, right through into the batten underneath. So when I put the dowels in, I know it's all going to be married up in the same place and it should all fit exactly perfectly. And as you can see from the spirit level, it's pretty much on the level. So it's not, it's exactly the same height. So the heights match up. There's no difference in elevation between the L shape and the main layout. So that's cool. So now it's just a matter of doing the, um, the dowels and putting them in. And then after once I put them in, then I can sort of know that it's secure. And then I can start thinking about laying the track um, for this area just to see what will work and what won't work. Um, but I'm pretty, I've really sort of done the track plan previously, so it should all just fit in here. And I'll put some fascia pieces on the side here just to make it um, look a little bit more presentable. So welcome to part number four. And in this section, we're gonna talk about rail operations. And the reason why, well, it will all become apparent because it's kind of blended in from the last bit that you've just seen. So I'm gonna spin you around and I'm going to kind of show you what I've been up to. And prepare yourself for this because this is quite a big change what you're about to see. So here's the brief overview of the rail operations here at Goswell Sidings. So when I last left you, I sort of left you over at the sidings, uh, over at the lift up section, which is just over there. And like I said, I will get into that in a bit more detail, but this is just to give you a brief, brief overview as to how far I've actually got. So this is kind of like the track plan that as you can see, and we've now actually made it through into the corridor and as you can see, there's a 66 with some cement tank wagons on the back of it. So as you can now see, this is 
you're looking at the link between the main layout and the actual L shape, which is Goswell's sidings. And you might be able to see um, that there's a connection here. And that's how it's connected up through these quick release cables. You just simply plug them, split them and unplug them. Very quick and easy. And um, so that just means that this lift up section can be put up and taken down in a matter of seconds. Um, but as you can also see, I've actually done some, <coughs> not only have I done track laying, which you didn't see any at all previous, um, you can see that there's some track laying here. So this track plan evolved quite quickly. Um, and this was a case of seeing what I had in terms of spare track, spare points, and seeing what I could do with it in order to get round this corner. And I quickly decided um, that I wanted to do um, a siding. Um, I've been watching a lot of Don Coffey. He's a train driver, subscriber, uh, sorry, YouTuber, I should say. He's called Don Coffey. Um, I, think, I believe he's a train driver for Trans Pennine. I could be wrong. Um, and he's got links with um, Freightliner. And he does a lot of cab rides from only, not only from his Trans Pennine routes, but also from um, Class 66s and other, and other companies. Um, for, like I said, Freightliner being one of them. Um, and Northern's another. And it, I find that very, very interesting. And he did a cab ride not so long ago from Bedford to L Sidings. And this is where I kind of got the idea of for these sidings here at Goswell. So it's called Goswell Sidings. So the idea is um, I've had to put the point work here because I wanted to maximise the length of the sidings that I've got going on um, along here. Let me just hold this. See my cement tech. I've got a problem with this, this little one. Um, but I'm going to try and sort that out. So forgive me for that. Um, so I wanted to maximise the most of the sidings here. And like I said, if you know L sidings by Freightliner, or even if you Google it, um, you'll know it's kind of in Derbyshire and it's very kind of rural. But I just like the idea that this is just like an almost like a rural outpost. And so that's kind of what I'm going for. So this line here and these, the one next to it are basically the main lines that will run off and carry on. And obviously where the 66 is and there's another line behind it are the two sidings that I can store some um, wagons. Primarily um, these cement wagons because Earl Sidings um, is basically for Hope Cement Works and so basically they do store a lot of these PCA wagons up at Earl Sidings so, and also HIAs I think as well so any of my HIAs and maybe even my NGAs um, you know they can be stored there it's not really a problem so this is kind of how it looks at the moment and I'm trying to carry on. I haven't finished it by any stretch of the imagination. And what I've done is I've actually added a back piece, which you can barely see because it's the same paint as what's on the wall. And the idea of that is that when you look at it from a distance, you've kind of got this idea of height all the way through. Um, and, that's, and that's kind of how I was looking at it. So when you look at it from around, it just, no matter how high you look, it just looks like it's sky all over even though you can sort of barely see the line that runs across from the top of the top edge of the um, of the boards that I've added at the back. Um, so that's kind of what I've done, but in order to create this length, I've had to kind of put all the siding, all the point work, or try and get a lot of the point work done before I actually got to the L shape, which is why a lot of the point work has been put onto the lift up section but fortunately none of the point work is anywhere near any of the joints so that means that there isn't going to be any issues with that your closest one is this one here 
but that works fine. Um, as you can see, I've also added this fascia piece here, um, and that again is just kind of blend in with the whole kind of um, sort of wall and scenery thing. And like I said, when you get to the close up shots, you're not going to be seeing what's going on in the background. And what I'll do is I'll take a photograph and um, I will sort of add it in here and then so you can actually see or a video clip or something and then you can see for yourself so the idea is that the train will be coming in this direction and if it's on the main line it will just carry on coming up here and swing around and then just carry on if it is like my 66 with the, with the cement works then the idea is it can come in here Pull off onto the siding here, start the siding here, and then it can work its way around to um, over here, which is, sorry, I didn't quite show you, to one of these two sidings. You've either got this one here or the one at the back. The one at the back is slightly longer. So in this view, you can see that there is an additional siding to the right of the 66. And... The idea is that the 66 can run round the train. So it will come out uncoupled from the cement train, cross over this crossover, come onto this point here, and come out to the bit that isn't built yet. <laughs> and then it can go back along the main line and basically Go to the right down to the very end to the crossover to the point right down the end there, which you can just round there, and then basically back on itself. So that's kind of the idea of it. And um, and then this bit here, um, this bit is basically sort of similar to L sidings. This is kind of going to be like I'm going to put some more plaster create another little road here basically it's parking facilities and maybe um, a few other little bits and pieces for the railway um, i'm not sure whether this is going to be a bridge on this end this corner i haven't quite decided which is why it's still quite plain here um, you can see that i've also added um, the catch pits and i've also made a start on the cable trunking by laying down the matchsticks and the path for those as well so all in all, um, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, in truth, if it was a bit longer, so I could accommodate a slightly longer train, I would be happier. Um, but in all honesty, um, I cannot complain um, because it's just, you know, it's. I'm just grateful that I, I can actually extend the layout to this point. So. You know, it, it is what it is. There is some constraints, but at the same time, I didn't want to encroach too much on my living area. Um, so that lift up section, like I said, will take a lift up and get rid of that in, in a matter of seconds. So here I am sitting on my ottoman, which I bought. And it's a little little square cube. I'll just quickly show you. And basically, it's got my railway cushion on it. And the reason for this little cube is basically, if I want to run a train, I can run a train from here. And if I spin you around, so this is the view from my ottoman. So I'm almost dropped down to sort of like eye level kids view if you like and um, obviously you can see the sidings from there and you can sort of see it from here and I can see it all the way around and like I said just swivel my head and I can get to there so that is kind of cool and so if I want to make this around here I can do and as you can now see I've now installed the Digitrax um, system 
here on the layout. So welcome to part five. So part five is gonna be how I'm operating my system. And as you can see, um, I've got a Digitrack system here. Um, I've now decided wholeheartedly and fully committed to this Digitrack system. Um, at the moment, it's still a bit of a lash up because the um, although the track is connected and it's, and it's connected in the correct manner, the actual low connect cable, which is what this is attached to, so the main layout is a bit of a lash up. Now, if I just show you what I mean by that, if I spin you around the corner, you can see that that gray cable along, running along the floor goes direct to the main unit in the main layout. Um, so it isn't quite ready yet. I haven't quite, because it isn't, the cable just isn't quite long enough yet. Um, so I'm gonna get a slightly longer cable, but I'm gonna be using this cable elsewhere. So I need another cable in any case. So I've got this um, controller. This is a Digitrax controller. And I really do like the system. Um, like I said, this isn't a brand new or singing or dancing controller by any stretch of the imagination. Um, however, the system is sound and you can do a lot with it. So we have our 66 in camera shot. So just as a quick demo, I'm just going to um, fire up. Like I said, I'm tethered to this and the low connect cable. Now the idea would normally be to go onto the main line and run around the train, but because I haven't got the length, because obviously the layout finishes here, I'm just going to take it back around the sidings.
So I hope you enjoyed that little clip and hopefully it will demonstrate to you the reason for putting the fascia up on that back piece. Um, as you can see, it actually runs across in the blue as well on that corner. So you can sort of see how that runs and works out. Now I'm gonna carry on showing you some more goodies. And um, this is sort of to do, um, I guess this is part five B stroke part six, because part six is to do with Christmas. So I guess the Digitrack system that I have is all sort of to do with Christmas as well, because uh, I'm still waiting on getting some bits for Christmas. Um, to do with the controller itself. I'm um, hoping to sort that out maybe tomorrow, um, but I'm not sure yet. But I don't think it'll be in time before I to get it before I go back to work on Monday. Um, but let me just show you. I've decided to take on the Digitrack system. It's definitely the right system for me, and you can do a lot with it. I have been kind of oohing and ahhing about this particular system because it was second hand, and because it was second hand then there's always that kind of element of, you know, it doesn't have a warranty or anything like that. However, um, I know it works and the basic system works perfectly fine. Is this system here. I don't know if I can zoom you in, but I can. So this is basically the Super Chief Extra set. And the, the basic set basically just comes with that unit um, which is a DCS100, um, a DT402, which is what this is, um, which is very similar to the handset I was using over at the far side, except this one's a better version because this one has a more the full function sound capability, whereas the other one only has up to 12, although it's still perfectly usable. Um, it, it, I'm not sure if it originally came with a power pack, so I don't think, I think you had to provide your own um, because obviously when you're selling it abroad, then obviously the Americans have got a different power supply than what we have. So I think it didn't come with a power supply, but obviously it came with all the manuals and it came with a low connect cable. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's if you buy a system, um, just a basic system, which is what, what this is. But this system here is just a basic one. However, um, it came with a whole load of other bits and pieces, which I'm just going to quickly go through. Um, now on this you can change the scale, so you can change it from O to N to G and O. Um, so obviously that's to do with the power output. The low connect cable basically runs, this is like the hash job, that has gone direct to the L shape. Um, so I need to get a longer cable to be able to fit that properly. Um, and then you've got the rails and the power output. And then there's also some other features that you can do, which is the programming track as well. And then, so I'm just going to just shut this down because I'm not going to be using it anymore. So to shut it down officially um, is that you basically switch the power button on at the bottom. So you can actually track, turn off the track power straight away without actually turning off the unit. So I turn that off and then press N and that says no. So then the track status is gone. Is light is off, which is there. Um, basically, it means that I can't run any trains. And then basically you switch this down to sleep and it's on sleep mode and then it just tells you it's on idle and then you're ready to switch off at the mains at the plug so we're now going to move on to the stuff that i kind of got for christmas and just it kind of the digitrack stuff ties in with this next part of the christmas stuff because basically um i've decided to go ahead and purchase this digitrack system the digitrack system is, is a fabulous system and it's definitely the one that i'm definitely more comfortable with and that i want to go with um its expandability is absolutely brilliant it's got the ampage and the power to do it and not only that um i've got a load of accessories from paul which i've touched upon um before so I'll quickly go through them. I might go through them in two details. I'm sure I've showed you before. But basically, what I've showed you before is I've got two of these, which is DCS 50s, which are the hands handheld controllers. So those those are those. But those are those are limited. Um, and when I say limited, they can only do up to about nine sound functions, which is such a pity because I really wanted to get 
because there was two, I was hoping that one of them might have the full sound um, functions, but it doesn't. They're both can only take up to nine sounds, so it's not really um, any good to me. However, because the overall package price was so good, um, I couldn't really say no. So that's that's the other thing. The other thing is that I've that, I've, that I've came with the package was um, was this, which is a UT4, and um, I've subsequently been given another one from Paul because um, he had two, and so he's given me an extra one of these. Now I've been experimenting with these. And the thing is about these is um, when I saw Paul yesterday, he actually gave me the low connect cable. And the low connect cable is what allows me to then run the trains from the L shape, which I showed you earlier. And without that, I couldn't have run the trains from the L shape. And also I wanted to test the UT4 from it to see if it worked uh, because I haven't been able to test everything that was given to me. And this little controller, um, like I said, he's given me an additional one, so I've got two. Um, so this is very old school in the sense that it's got dials to put in the address. And then you've got the few, you've got the sound functions here. You can take, do up to 12 sound functions, which is in most cases pretty good. But obviously we're up to 28 these days. But I like the way it sits in the hand. You can control it all one-handed and you can just use your thumb to rotate it and to control it. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it to pieces. Um, so much so that the reason why I wanted to, to test this one in particular is because I was thinking of getting the upgraded version, which is called a UT6. The UT6 has got a digital screen, but essentially it's exactly the same. Um, it's got a digital screen and it's got, um, it can use the full sound function functions, whereas this one's up to 12. The UT6, you can do the full range of sound functions, which is absolutely brilliant. And it looks more modern, but essentially, it, the the actual sort of um, premise is the same. It's still roughly the same shape. It's still roughly the same style. It's just a digital version. And then you've got the little knob on the top, which goes from left to right or center. And that controls your forward, your reverse and your brake. So I was really keen on testing this just to see how comfortable I would be using this kind of controller. And it's absolutely fabulous. I love it. And the other thing I love about this is that for people coming over to run um, operating sessions with you, for example, um, this doesn't control any CVs or anything like that. You can't do any CV work with this, which is fabulous because those people operating, they don't need a controller that can change CVs or, or whatever, or programming things or whatever. They don't need to know. They just need the simplicity of being able to pick up a controller and knowing that this button here would control the speed this button on the top would make it go left or right and these buttons here will control the sound functions and that's all you need to know you know so you don't need all that sort of complicated stuff so when you get a ut6 which is what i'm planning on doing um i think that's going to be a great way to go forward um like the other thing about the ut6 is you can only control one train at a time but again for people coming over to control trains they only need to control one train at a time so that's so that's fine um, and also the other thing about the UT6 is a lot cheaper as well because you haven't got the extra features of having to do the CV programming and the twin track twin train controls so it is slightly cheaper as well so it's an absolutely fabulous little unit and I just love the way it just sits in the palm of my hand and that I can run trains off of this absolutely brilliant um, the other thing that Paul had given me um previous was this up5 now the up5 does come with the i didn't mention it before but it does actually come as part of the basic set that you do get the low connect cable you get the dcs 100 the dt402 and that this was the original the original digitrack set so this is the original one that came but when i saw him yesterday he told me he had an additional one and he's going to throw it in for nothing so basically it's just he said there's no point in keeping this stuff he's not going to use it it's no point might as well just give it all to me and so fabulous so i've now got two up5s um the ur90 that's over there that i was using on the l shape that wasn't part of the set so again that was an extra so i've got two extras which will go into the bedroom for when i extend it into the bedroom put the fill yard in there and last by no means least 
um, that he'd also given me. Um, that came with the whole box was four DS DS sixty fours, and like I said, I briefly touched on this earlier, but basically these um, basically control up to four accessories per box. So Christmas gifts. So what did I get for Christmas? Right now, some of it has arrived over the Christmas period, and some of it was bought for me, um, and some of it I just treated myself. So something that arrived um, over the Christmas period, like I said, well they all from the Christmas period, is is this transit van, and this is a drop side transit van, Oxford diecast. And there's a reason why I bought this one. I bought this one because it's yellow. Um, there's a lot of white ones and stuff like that. But I, wanted to, I saw this yellow one. I thought I'll get the yellow one because that looks quite nice. And I had an idea for it. So one of the ideas that I had for it. Now this is thanks to, I believe it's Dave over at Warwick Road. So Dave, if you're watching, thank you very much. Um, so he mentions quite a lot that he buys stuff from a company on eBay called Shed Ring. And... Basically, I had a look at Shed Ring and they had some really, really nice little bits and pieces. So whilst I was at, I was at Shed Ring, I bought this um, little this little wood chipper. And it comes with its own wood chips and everything. And so the idea is, is that will go with my, um, yeah, with my transit van. Now, it does look a bit plasticky, so I'm going to give it a bit of a paint job to make it a little bit more realistic because it does look a bit like plastic. But... I thought I'll stick it on there and that can go with my transit van, my drop side transit. Um, also that came from Shed Ring was some really, really interesting products. Um, and yeah, so I bought a couple of other bits at the same time as the wood chipper. Now this is a set of ballast bags um, and these are network crowd ones and basically they're stickers and then it also comes with a little bag of gravel and then you just top it up with real gravel um, or real ballast as it were so it's a little it's a nice little pack so I've got that from him and also um, I bought a code free Oxford diecast vehicle now for those of you who are not sure what that means um, there are various codes when you go onto the internet for Oxford diecast and the reason for this is that it's to help people distinguish whether a vehicle has been um, modified in any way, shape or form. And so code one, Oxford Diecast, is basically the original version. And code threes are modified versions of original Oxford Diecast vehicles, which is what this is. Um, so basically this is, I got this from, again from Shedring and it is, it cost me a bit more, but what do you expect? Cause it is modified, but this is it. This is a Ford Transit network rail van. And the thing that's modified about this is that it's got an open door. Um, so let me just see if I could, I, it was falling out earlier. Oh, there it is. Right, so it's got an open door and there's actually a newspaper on the seat. So that's quite cool and it's got an interior as well. So you think, so basically the original one, you'd, you'd sort of have that window and it'd be closed and it'd just look exactly the same as that side, except on the other side. But this one's actually got an open door, sliding door. So that's what the code three means because it's been modified. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. So that will be going on the layout. So look out for that. So when you go into eBay and you're looking at or wherever and you look at these box diecasts and it says what code it is, if it's code free, then you know it's been modified. And generally modifications can be anything. Sometimes it can be that they were just plain white vehicles and now they've put, they've made it into, um, say, um, a different company. They put different company logos on it or given it a paint job or something like that. Um, this is an original Oxford diecast vehicle that's turned up, and this is a transporter. 
and this is another with crowd response vehicle so they're kind of mounting up but I wanted a fair few just to have kind of like a car park full of them um one of the yeah and then one of the other things is um now I've used this company before and I have to say um, a massive shout out and um, basically a massive shout out goes to Eagle One Model Rail Signs. I've used them so many times before. They're the company that I've used over at Borden and Gardens when I had when I had Borden and Gardens. Um, their signage is on my Volma container terminal. Um, their their signage is also on my Mildenhall um, signage. So I because the reason why I go to him is because he's basically done keeps doing a cracking job and they always look so authentic. So what did I get from him this time? So um, this time, I, like I said, I've just done Goswell siding, so I wanted some signage for that. And this is signage based on the new Freightliner colours over at Earl Sidings. And um, so I got him to do me a replica um, for me. So it's Eagle One, Model Rail signs, and like I said, there's the all the information you need right there if you need to contact him. He's actually, like I said, on eBay as well, which is where I got these from. Um, so let's see what he got me. Don't they look fabulous? I'm absolutely over the moon with these. I can't wait to fit them. So that's what's called, it's called Goswell Sidings and it's basically Freightliner. And um, so he's gonna be Put there, they're going to be put on that side of the layout. Like I said, he does a fabulous job, but it looks so authentic. It looks virtually identical. Um, the font looks identical and everything. So hats off to him. And he's very accommodating. Because he said to me, that he, he, he actually said to me well, on, on, on the messages, he said to me, oh, you know, I was wondering when somebody was going to ask me about that. So I was obviously the first one to ask him about that. And, um, and he's done a cracking job and I would highly recommend him. Um, not only for his, you know, cracking authentic signs that look absolutely fabulous, but he's also his speediness and he's, he's very accommodating as well. So, you know, if you've got a sign that maybe he doesn't do, you can actually contact him on the message and sort of say to him, look, is there any chance that you could possibly do this or, or that? And he'll come back to you and let's say yes or no or whatever. Next. It's a big box. Um, I haven't built it yet. It's one of those that's going to be there for me to do when I feel like doing it, but it's there. So what did I get? An Airfix Vulcan Bomber Avro Vulcan B2 172 scale. And it hasn't been opened as of yet. And as many of you will know, um, I bought the Class 37 Backman um, set um, for um, with the two Vulcan bombers in it so it was a complete set with the poster and and like I said I got this thing for the Vulcan bomber and so I bought the airfix kit because um, it's just something that I thought I haven't built an airfix kit actually it was actually I think it was um, I could be wrong I think it might be Reggie over at um, Brayworth Park that I think he bought um, a Lancaster bomber from Airfix, I think, and um, and he's going to build that, and you know that kind of also inspired me again. Again, watching Hornby's program also got me to thinking. So I haven't built a, a, an Airfix kit in ages, and what better aircraft than a Vulcan bomber? Um, just anyway, from my point of view, because like I said, the thing about these things, I love the way they look, but I love the way they sound. You just have to watch the clips on YouTube of Vulcan bombers. On YouTube and hear them do their do their displays and how they sound like and it sounds absolutely awesome so I'm really really pleased so that kind of leads me nicely to my next item so my next item um, is this this is a 12 ton plank wagon now I did not buy that um, this actually came as a gift that comes from the Batman Collectors Club. So I'm actually a member of the Batman Collectors Club. 
and not only do am I a member, but you get that. You also get a little pin badge that say that you're a little that say that you're a member from the Batman Collectors Club. So, why did I join the Batman Collectors Club? Now, the reason is basically very similar to what I've just told you about the Vulcan Bomber and the train pack that I've got for the Vulcan Bomber. Basically, in my box, I should show you my box. There you go, there's my box. I got, ready for this? Yes, I got the Pride of Britain Captain Tom Moore Collectors Club Special Edition. Now, I know I'm a little bit late to the party um, with this because I know lots of people have got this already. Um, this is something that I've wanted for some time now. Um, and I, Paul over at my local mall shop told me that he managed to get hold of one on, on, um, from the Collectors Club and he told me that they were still selling them at the Collectors Club. And I looked at the Collectors Club and they still are selling them. Um, so you can get the two versions, you can get the sound or the non-sound version. And I decided to push the boat out and get the sound version for it. And it's absolutely awesome. I love it. I just love the packaging. I love the way it looks. It looks absolutely fabulous. Um, I always love this kind of Collectors Club packaging. And the, the, the packaging that these train packs that Batman do, because I think it's absolutely amazing. I was a bit worried at first because when I looked at the um, the website, it originally said it was sound fitted on the front of the box. So when I opened this and it didn't say it, I was thinking, oh my God, they've sent me the wrong version. But as it turns out, it must be because they didn't want to damage the box. So it's got a little label on the side that actually says that it actually is sound fitted to my relief. Um, that they sent me the right one and then the next thing was actually to test it to make sure it was actually um, working and the sound was working and the local was working so let me just show you the back of the box so this is the pride of Britain with the loco and you get the two Spitfires now I have to say um, I the, the Vulcan one is nicer the 37558 train pack is nicer. I like, do like the style of this box as well, and I like the fact that it's square, but it isn't quite as nice as the um, as the Vulcan one. And the reason why I say that is you get a lot more with the Vulcan pack than you do with this. Um, this is literally you're getting the loco, and you're getting the two Spitfires, and sort of the, the accessories like the stands and the train the train pack accessories and the name plates that's what you'll get and that's it uh, whereas with the um with the vulcan pack that i bought um basically it you know you got you got the poster you got the name plates got etched name plates and you've got various other bits and pieces of other bits of memorabilia which you don't get with this let me just quickly show you before we end the video because it is cracking on a bit so here it is. It is, an, it is a beautiful pack. It really is. And you've got your little Spitfire, which is brilliant. Absolutely fabulous. And um, you've got this other one as well, which is slightly different. This is more of a, I think it's more like the desert sort of camouflage version, but it's just exquisite models. It really is. They're beautiful. And then you've got the locomotive itself. And like I said, I have run it just to test it, but I haven't actually run it properly because obviously of all the work I've been doing. But it's an absolute exquisite locomotive, absolutely fabulous. Um, so I'm really pleased. Like I said, I am a bit late to the party with this, but however, I was lucky enough to still manage to get it. And like I said, all you get is just a little certificate and just basically the usual sort of Batman um, sort of sound function list and you know the maintenance schedule or whatever it is but other than that you know on the on the back you just get 
I don't, I don't think you can, so I won't do it because I don't want to drop the Spitfires or the locomotive. But basically you just get the stands and the accessory packs for the train, which is a bit disappointing in some ways, but um, like I said, you do get more in the Vulcan pack, but it's still nonetheless a wonderful pack to own and have. And I always wanted it. And to be honest with you, when you see the way some of these people are selling the Hornby version on eBay, and it's like, you know, some of them are trying to make a load of money off of it on eBay. And you think if you paid a little bit extra, you can actually get the Backman Collectors Club version. A non -sound, the non-sound one was £200. And the this one was £279 um, with the sound. Which, in today's the way today's climate is going for prices and stuff like that, those of you who've seen the Hornby range review... Um, it's just way too much, some of those prices. I think I don't know where they get them from, to be honest. Um, however, you know, this is £279 with sound, with the Spitfires. I think it's still really, really good value for money. I mean, obviously, you have to be um, a Batman Collectors Club member. So if you're not, then you have to pay that extra, which is what I kind of had to do. But I felt it was worth it to get this train pack. I think it's absolutely wonderful. So there you go. So this concludes the end of today's video and I hope you've enjoyed it and I'm sorry if it's long winded um, but like I said you can split it, split it up along the way and um, and then therefore you know if you can't watch it all in one go you can just sort of stop and just go into the next bit when you've got some time. Um, so until the next time it's goodbye from Milton Hall and Volmer. Um, the unit itself I didn't really speak too much on the unit itself but that's still not it's still not quite ready yet. It's not too far off done it is basically most of it is painted. Um, I just need to give it another coat and I have to get the doors for it. So whether or not that will be done before I go back to work on Monday is another story. I'm not sure yet. But until the next time, it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye.